Hi, I'm Valder Beebe. I'm the host and the visionary of the Valder Beebe Show, God Talk. Some people talk to God and others believe that God talks to them. Join us in conversation with authors, religious clergy, metaphysicians, and regular people like you and I and God Talk. God Talk is a podcast available on FM Radio, Roku TV, and online. Subscribe at ValderBBShow.com. You can also subscribe at YouTube.com slash ValderBBShow. Join the conversation of God Talk. I'll see you there. I want my audience to know, today with restrictions being lifted around the country, people are returning to work environments that look familiar, but they continue to experience different talent and challenges. And I've got Dr. Dana Sumter. She's going to share some top tips for employees returning to the office, especially for working moms. Dr. Sumter, you know, this is a reality. This is our world that we live in. Tell me some of the challenges women face as they look to re-enter the workplace. Sure. Yeah. Unfortunately, the challenges continue, right? And it's for working moms. And I think also other kinds of caregivers as well. So I think the first challenge I would note is scheduling that, you know, returning to the office means creating new routines. It's reintroducing a commute, maybe figuring out a new family schedule. And let's not forget when we're maybe talking about two partners in a household, that means two new schedules to coordinate. Who does what around the house? Who's going to do the kids' pickups and drop-offs? And so with one or both jobs in a household changing, that complicates a family schedule. There's also the challenge of uncertainty, that there unfortunately is continued uncertainty around childcare and schooling. I know I'm not the only one who's had kids who had had to stay home unexpectedly because of a runny nose, you know, meaning two or three days at home until maybe no symptoms or a negative COVID test. And that all completely disrupts my plans for work. You know, this is one of the many reasons why COVID has had an outsized impact on women and continues to do so. When you're going back to an organization, what are some of the ways the organization and companies can help facilitate re-entry into the workplace? Yeah, so there's definitely a lot that companies can do. So I would say first, managers and leaders, you need to keep your finger on the pulse of how reentry is going. This is the time to listen and pay attention to your employees. So that means maybe having scheduled one-on-ones, conducting pulse check surveys, really seeking feedback from folks. These are the ways that managers can anticipate where there may be problems and understand how they can best support their employees. Managers and leaders also need to be sure that they're paying attention to their employees' holistic needs, right? The days are gone when you're just focusing on what happens at work. We all have had a great reckoning with what's really important to us, right? And increasingly, employees are just not willing to put up with bosses who ignore their family lives or their well-being. So demonstrate that you care about employees holistically. That means providing support policies, structured opportunities for people to connect, you know, right-sizing performance expectations. Those are some of the ways that they can do so. And finally, I think it's really important for managers and leaders to talk about the positives of coming back, right? None of us like to be forced to do anything. No one likes a mandate. So try to attract people to come back to the office. Talk up how valuable it will be to collaborate with colleagues and set up ways for those interactions to happen. This will help folks feel more at ease with some of the trade-offs they need to make, like making that long commute again or having to dress from head to toe. And I think the best Mother's Day gift that a company could give their working mothers is to really listen to their needs, consider how you can support them as they re-enter back to the office, and offer them as much flexibility as you can, because they really need it these days. Finally, what resources and policy approaches that provide critical support, you know, as these employees go back to uh, work, what can the company offer these employees? Yes. So I think, you know, flexibility with scheduling and control over timing of when and where work gets done is really important. So codifying that in a policy can prevent any individual manager from kind of jamming that up or not providing any flexibility. Um, I think it's also important for organizations to direct employees to resources externally as needed. So for example, you know, we want to keep an eye on our mental health these days, especially during any change. So organizations like NAMI.org, N-A-M-I.org, it's a great resource 
dollars for support and information. Uh, I think also I'm obviously very biased as a professor, but you know, considering a higher degree is often a great way to jumpstart a career or revitalize a career or steer it in a new direction. So company support for higher degree pursuit, you know, getting an MBA, master's in management and leadership or other fields, you know, those are great avenues towards those goals. And finally, this is a little off script, but what when that what happens when that employee has uh, reasons for not returning to the office, like they are not vaccinated, they don't want to be vaccinated, whatever? H- how does that play out for the employee? Where do they get support for that? Right. I mean, I tell you, companies have been in a really difficult spot, right? Because you you want to accommodate employees' personal choice, but you also need to provide a safe workplace and a healthy work environment for everybody involved. So I think these are these are. Uh, these are topics where organizations need to obviously, first of all, know what laws and regulations they need to abide by, and then really figuring out what's best for their people. And that can oftentimes mean just having conversations with folks, you know, having small group discussions, um, you know, conducting surveys, because by finding out what their employees' needs and concerns are, that's how they can best know how to address them. I think the worst case scenario is when a company just kind of from the top down dictates policies without garnering any feedback or, or understanding from the employees. And then the employees are left feeling like something was forced upon them. So by understanding how their folks feel and what their concerns are, that can help organizations best know how to navigate through different policy options as employees return. Great rebuttal, Dr. Sumter. Where can my uh, audience find more information online? Because I know there are people who are caught in the middle of this. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think, you know, paying attention to to what research is coming out on this topic, there are a lot of of folks in my field who are studying these these important issues. So for my organization and and to seek some of the resources um, that my great colleagues are, are putting out, um, the website is bschool.pepperdine.edu. You can search um, Pepperdine Grad Business Schools, great centers and faculty profiles where we're sharing our cutting edge, cutting edge research on you know, managing the return to work and what the future of work will look like. Dr. Dana Sumter is an associate professor of organization theory and management at Pepperdine. Dr. Sumter, thank you so much for giving us just a little bit of light on that subject. Have a great day. Thank you, Valder. You too. I'm Valder Beebe. I host the Valder Beebe Show, broadcast on radio and television. And this is My Phone Pouch. My Phone Pouch is a great invention. It allows me to go hands-free, pocket-free, purse-free, even belt-free. Head on over to myphonepouch.com.